Good evening, everyone. Um, welcome to the Tuesday, July 23rd, uh, 2024 Covington City Council meeting. Uh, in compliance with state law, City Council special and regular meetings will be held in a hybrid format with in-person, telephonic, and virtual options for public viewing and participation. Um, Krista, can you um, call the roll? Yes. Council Member Soltis. Hi, I'm here. Council Member Porter. Here. Council Member Hartsock. Here. Council Member Harjahausen. Present. Council Member Simomo. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Smith. Here. And Mayor Wagner. We have a quorum, Your Honor. Thank you. Um, can I get a motion to excuse Mayor Wagner? So moved. Second. Um, it's been moved and seconded to excuse Mayor Wagner. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, we excuse the mayor. Um, you all stand with me for the Pledge of Allegiance. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Um, as acting mayor, I'm going to use my prerogative to kind of change things up a little bit. Um, I heard from a little bird that we have a birthday up here on the dais. So um, uh, council has something for you. Thank you. Open that up. We would open it right now. Sure, go ahead. Tick, 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 tick. Hey. Yes. Oh, <laughs> thank you. So sweet. Mm, I might leave a little bite. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it might be good to sing happy birthday as well, too. Oh, so, uh, bring your your singing voices. Um, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Are you good? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, birthday to you. Happy birthday, Happy birthday, dear Council Member Hartog. <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Thank you, Kelly. All right. <laughs> uh, move on uh, to approval of the agenda. Regan, are there any changes? Yes, we need to move item C5 from the consent agenda to new business. And you can put it in whichever order under new business you'd like. So we'll just for ease of my understanding, I'll just move it to number six. All right. Okay. Uh, so uh, motion to approve the amended agenda. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the amended agenda. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Moving on to the next part of the agenda, we've got reports from commissions. Uh, up first is the Economic Development Council. Is there anyone online? No? Okay. Um, Youth Council. Anyone online there? All right. You can come back if someone jumps on. Uh, Arts Commission? All right. Good evening. Okay. I have a couple updates this month that I'm excited about. Um, as you guys may have known, um, we had some shifting when it came to our leadership positions on the Arts Commission. So last meeting, we finally established who's going to be in which position. Um, we have uh, Bo Balhoff as our secretary now. Uh, Paloma Riviera is going to be our uh, vice chair. And me, Riley Reed, <laughs> I will be the chair of the Arts Commission. So I'm very excited about my new position. Thank you. Um, then we attended um, Covington Days. I don't know if anybody had a chance to see the big uh, chalk mural that we had that kids got to add color to, but I think that went really well and um, a lot of people liked it. And I saw it posted on the Covington page. 
So I think there was a lot of buzz around that. And I think that's something we could do for future events. Um, and we will be attending Kids Fest as well. Um, other than that, the other big update is we finally also agreed on um, our top suggestions for um, light boxes to be um, presented later in this meeting. Mm -hmm. So outside of that, um, we have a couple other projects we're working on, but no new news for those. That's everything I have. Okay, question? Was there a, a picture of the um, chalk karma after? I haven't gotten okay. a report okay. on who, because I wasn't the one who closed down that booth, but I'm sure they took pictures that day so hopefully yes but i haven't heard back okay. yet and we haven't had a meeting since so <laughs> but if there is one i will be sharing okay i'd love to see it so thank you yeah no worries uh up next equity culture and social justice we have a report we're online i have promoted um ramel i'm not sure if ramel will be giving a presentation okay. this evening all right, um, Human Services Commission. Yes, uh, Darius Tari here, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so Human Service Commission, we had a few new business that happened back in June. So the first thing was reallocation of funds. The commission has $31,606 funds to be reallocated. Um, all the money needs to be used up by December 31st of this year. The commission decided to um, distribute the funds by three ways, um, which I believe one of the ways got canceled at, but we will review that at this meeting. So we have decided to um, allocate the funds to uh, minor home repairs. Number one, number two, it's gonna be bicycle for the youth. And number three will be for gift cards for agencies to um, agencies on front lines to distribute. In addition to that, we are um, funding of Double A H double A. It's a mouthful. It's currently funded out of the general fund, and uh, and HB HB fifteen ninety city staff Johnston proposed to possibly fund the double A H double A out out of the four, um, HB fourteen oh six, as this is a more stable, predictable source of funding. Um, double A H double A has become an agency that is integral to the success of the Covington community program. So considering fund is important, the commission agreed with the proposal and recommended that the organization be funded out of the um, HB 1406 fund. And in addition to that, we just reviewed more applications for this year's request. We went through applications 11 through 20, mm -hmm. and we are just continuing reviewing the applications each week until we hit our um, goal of 47 applications. Great. That's all. Okay. Any questions? All right. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Parks and Rec Commission. Hello, everyone. Hello. Connie Elliott for uh, Parks and Recreation. And we had a succinct meeting um, this month. And I just want to uh, share that we had a, a pre update that you'll be hearing about the Jenkins Creek Trail Project. Um, Chuck McDowell from Fawcett is here, so uh, he'll be presenting to you. So I won't steal his thunder, um, but it's super exciting. I think for most of us who have lived in Covington to see the plan for the trail um, and the, the actual drawings that he has, the renderings. Um, we had just given him some feedback on a couple of things that we'd like to see, um, including a fence atop the concrete barrier where uh, the trail runs along tra traffic. Uh, like for the roadways. So, you know, there's a concrete barrier, but we'd also like to see a fence installed on top of that for additional security uh, for that. And then um, for the segment of the trail that goes through wooded areas, especially in the park, uh, Jenkins Creek Park, we'd like to see uh, sight lines opened up. So maybe trees limbed or vegetation removed so that um, there's better sight lines in the park and other wooded areas where the trail crosses through just for additional safety uh, and the feeling of being more open. Um, and then we also felt that where the, the, where the trail comes from the south up to 272nd and either crosses over or goes under, whatever ends up happening with that, 
we felt like um, the trail from the south up, you know, headed north should not, there shouldn't, it shouldn't just dead end at 272nd and then people have to walk to the intersection cross mm -hmm. and go around because they won't do that. Um, and so we don't want people making their own trail across 272nd um, at, at that point. So we suggested maybe that they look at some options for, you know, how they can maybe curve the trail towards the intersection in the interim um, until a crossing is determined at that point. So um, uh, great presentation and glad that you're going to see that tonight. Uh, we had a brief staff report from Ethan um, and then determined that our next meeting will be at the Aquatic Center. So you're all free to join us next month and hear about all the great mm -hmm. things going on at the Aquatic Center. Are there any questions? Any questions? Yeah. All right. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, finally, our planning commission. I think uh, just... he's on. Yeah, David. Yeah. Good evening, City Council. Glad to provide this really brief planning commission report for the last month. We had two significant agenda items for the planning commission meeting on June 20th. There was a public hearing for the step plan housing code update as relates to the enacted House Bill 1220. Emergency shelters, transitional housing, emergency housing, and permanent supportive housing are permitted by this code update for all land use zones other than the industrial zone. The planning commission approved the decision criteria and the staff findings for CMC 14.27040 and unanimously approved making a recommendation to the city council to adopt this ordinance. Believe it will be nice to discontinue the interim ordinance that has been renewed every six months since 2021. We also went through an introduction to the proposed mobile food units code amendment, the food trucks. This proposed amendment will expand their permitted zones to include all zones within the city of Covington. There was an interesting discussion regarding whether there should be hours of operations to fall under exemption, six hours or less, while other cities use four hours or less. Hmm. Also, what hours of operations would be more explicit, such as mobile food units shall not exceed 12 hours within a 24 hour period in any location, but definitely must close operations to not go past the 10 o'clock PM noise code. The intention is to leave it to the property owner and the mobile food unit to determine the ideal times of operations and whether the unit can be located before the business opens or after closing. There are other exemptions too, if, if you want me to relate those, I will leave that for uh, updates that are gonna be coming to you. We have the following agenda items for the next planning commission meeting on August 15th. There will be a public hearing for the mobile food units code amendment and a public safety presentation by Chief Easterbrook and Darren Patterson. I'm glad uh, to provide you this brief status update for the Planning Commission. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Um, David, on the um, food truck rules you're looking at, you mentioned that the potential trucks could only be in a on a spot for a certain amount of time. Did I understand that correctly? That is correct. Uh, Unless it's on an exemption basis. I mean, there's okay. other exemptions that are identified as permitted special events approved by the city staff. Mobile food units are on, are on private property, okay. not on right of way or open to the public. Like it'd be a private party or um, it's a, an event or a wedding or something like that. Those are exempt as well. And yeah. then vendors such as dairy food delivery and roving ice cream trucks are also exempt. Great. I appreciate that because part of the reason this came up was we had a uh, member of the public mentioned uh, she has a food truck on her property that Correct. was out of compliance. But it sounds like the way these rules are written, that would be permissible. They could have that on her property uh, indefinitely. I think the way that we're doing it is really kind of cool because I think it's going to increase the accessibility and convenience for residents and for visitors. It'll provide more opportunities for the mobile food businesses to actually thrive in our city and it'll enhance the vibrancy and diversity of food options for our city in, and that we've never had before. So it's a good okay. thing. Any other questions? No? All right. David, thank you. Thank you. Um, next agenda item, public communication. We, there are none. Um, so let's move on to our first public comment period. 
uh, speakers will state their name, organization, and whether they are a Covington resident. Comments are directed to the city council, not the audience or staff. Comments are to be related to city business. Comments are not intended for conversation or debate and are limited to four minutes per speaker. For attendees participating by Zoom, click the raise hand button. For attendees participating by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. Once the city grants permission to speak, press unmute in uh, Zoom or dial star six to unmute, unmute by phone. Is there anyone in the audience wishing to address the council? Seeing no one, anyone online wishing to address the council? Okay, I don't see anyone's hand. So there will be a second um, public uh, comment period at the end of tonight's uh, city council meeting. So um, we're moving in to our next agenda item. We'll look on there. You'll see we have an executive session, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, discussion of le with legal counsel regarding potential litigation pursuant to RCW 42.30.110 uh parentheses one uh subsection i and uh spoke with mark about 10 minutes still yes okay so we'll be in executive session for 10 minutes mayor then, pro tem yes sorry i will be recusing yeah. myself from executive session okay I, thank, you. thank you um so we'll be back in uh, uh roughly 10 minutes sure. so i guess uh Mayor Pro Tem, would you please announce the specific time? Jeez, but, um, it's seven seventeen, so we're looking to be back at uh, seven twenty-seven. Perfect. Thank you. Okay, well, let's go. That one closed. So we are back from executive session. We'll move on to approval of the modified consent agenda. I get a motion. So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded to approve the modified consent agenda. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. So now we're going to move on to new business. First up is um, to receive public testimony and consider a res resolution to support the City of Covington Proposition Number One Sales and Use Tax for Transportation Improvement and Maintenance. Um, I turn that over to you, Regan. I can take it. Oh, was, Mark, go ahead. Um, as you're aware, there are certain prohibitions on using public facilities to support or oppose uh, ballot measures. This is one of the exceptions where, where, where city council is able to argue for or against the proposition, and the public is able to voice their, uh, their opposition or support, so long as both sides are afforded an equal, approximately equal amount of time. And then before you is a resolution of support for the council to vote on. And from there, it's up to council to have a discussion and solicit public testimony as you see fit. Okay. Thank you. Yes, any questions for Mark at this point? No, okay. Uh, is there anyone in the audience who wants to speak to this agenda item by testimony? See no one, anyone online that would like to speak to this agenda item? Okay, no one is raising their hand. Um, okay, then I would consider a motion to pass a resolution supporting the city of Covington proposition number one regarding a sales and use tax for transportation improvement and maintenance. So moved. Second. So Third. it's been, uh, I don't know, Joe mm -hmm. moved and Beth seconded that. So uh, Joe, do you want to speak to your motion? I want to look directly at Mark while I'm talking so he can shake his head at me and tell me to stop. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think this is a good, I, I, supporting this measure is going to let our citizens know how we truly feel that this is going to benefit the city. We wouldn't have put it on the ballot if it didn't wasn't going to benefit the city, but I believe us supporting this as a whole and showing showing that to our residents that we stand behind what we say on this is going to help get this to pass. Should I preface that by saying you have the opportunity to speak for or against that motion? Oh, it's yeah, totally yeah. fine. All right. Um, right now, it's an opportunity for council to speak. Okay. Great. Uh, 
through the normal parliamentary okay. procedures. Yeah. Beth, did you want to speak to your second? Uh, having this opportunity for our residents to see um, the financial position of the city and some of the opportunities that might exist and giving them an opportunity to weigh in on, on different funding measures, I think is appropriate. And um, I support the resolution for that reason. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to support a proposition that ultimately saves our residents money. A mm -hmm. um, two percent sales tax is less money than a twenty dollar um, car tap fee. I know I'm looking forward to um, the potential benefits as as a resident as well. So I'm I'm happy to support this proposition. Anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. In theme, I to support this. Um, it makes sense for our residents. Uh, it shows that we have them in mind and first and foremost prioritized um, and that we're doing the best we can with what we have. Thank you. Great. Anyone else? Okay. It's been uh, moved and seconded to pass a resolution supporting the city of Covington proposition number one regarding a sales and use tax for transportation improvements and maintenance. All those in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Any opposed? So that motion is passed. All right, thank you. So we'll move on to uh, agenda item number two, consider appointments to the Covington Economic Development Council. Does anyone wish to take action? Oh. I move. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry, Debbie, go ahead. Are you sure, was I first? Yeah, go ahead. Well, that's who I saw first, so go okay. ahead. Excuse me, I'm just getting my, my notes here. Um, I'm, I move. Mm -hmm. To appoint Kalen Pravaski to fill a position on the Covington Economic Development Council with the term expiring July 31st, 2026. Second. I second. Okay. Moved and seconded to appoint uh, Kalen Pravaski to a position on, uh, on CETUS. Uh, Debbie, do you wish to speak to your motion? Sure. Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. Kaylin's been on CETUS for eight years and he's he's d provided um, great input and ideas over those eight years. He has um, ideas wanting to see us move forward. Um, he was very concise about um, the things that they have done so far in CETUS and the work that will need to be done to keep our downtown core um, active and part of the essential of, um, or the essence of Covington. Um, he talked a lot about how they go out and do business to business um, discussions. Um, public safety is uh, front and foremost for them and working closely with our Chamber of Commerce. Um, he's got great ideas. I would love to see him for another two years. Great. Um, I forgot, Debbie, did you second? I forgot who seconded. Yeah, go ahead, wanna to speak to your second? Or, uh, uh, Beth, sorry. Good. Sorry. Um, everything that uh, that Debbie had said, and and he also had a very poignant um, comment. And when he thought, uh, what he saw as the most important function of CEDIS is that um, it's their job to be a conduit, to be a welcoming group for businesses that are coming in, but also for retaining current businesses and um, to be able to get feedback and and be a two way flow of communication between the community and um, the city, and you know that echoing the the priorities of safety, walkability, having both local small businesses as well as large um, some larger retailers and and that mix that I know our residents um, are really um, it's a valuable to them. that's something that we keep hearing from our residents. so thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against the motion? Okay. Um, so it's been moved and seconded to appoint Kalen Probotsky to fill a position on the Covington Economic Development Council with a term expiring July 31st, 2026. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So Kalen has been appointed. Does the council wish to take additional action? Yeah. Um, I move to appoint Rod Myers to fill a position on the Covington Economic Development Council with the term expiring July 31, 2026. 
Second. Second. Okay. Um, been moved and seconded to appoint uh, Rod Myers to fill a position on the Covington Economic Development Council with the term expiring July 31st, 2026. Jennifer, do you wish to speak to your motion? Yeah, Rod Myers um, has been serving on our uh, Covington Economic Development Council. And so this was his uh, reapplication. He uh, shared with us some of their accomplishments that he's most proud of, such as Restaurant Week and Covington Days. Um, really is is passionate about a dedicated town downtown core vision. Um, something you know, he had great responses to questions, but something that you know stood out to me was that um, he did. He did have an idea to improve the commission's work and operations by essentially um, advising more and really building out a plan. Um, he suggested maybe five years to to really keep them focused on a longer term strategy to be more proactive in what businesses will need in 10 years from now versus just dealing with what needs to be done now, but really um, establishing that plan to look farther ahead, which for me, you know, as council, we do mostly that and so you know that that made that made sense to me you know that all of our commissions should be operating in that way we can't do everything overnight so yeah thank you great uh christina you wish to speak to your second sure and thank you jennifer that was exactly what i was going to say he's 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 very visionary and forward thinking but i also liked that he mentioned being a bridge and that it was a vital role between um, between the city government and the businesses, and um, not just an advisory role. But he, I, I really liked the, the image of the bridge. Um, and Rod is everywhere. Rod, um, everyone loves Rod. Rod loves everyone. He's um, great to work with, always in good spirits. And I'm looking forward to see what he contributes to the future. That's great. Nice. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against the motion? Okay, it's been moved and seconded to appoint uh, Rod Myers to fill a position on the Covington Economic Development Council with the term expiring July 31st, 2026. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, appointed Rod uh, again to the to seat us. I don't think we have anyone else to consider. So, okay, um, that uh, we'll move on then to the next agenda item. Agenda item number three, Jenkins Creek Trail Planning and Design Project Update. Uh, Ethan. Hey, good evening, council. Um, this agenda item is to provide council with an update on the Jenkins Creek Trail Master Planning and Phase One uh, Preliminary Design Project. Uh, this is a project that the city has received some grant funding uh, to complete. Um, we were last in front of you on this topic back in March, um, and a lot of work has happened since then. So uh, with that, I'm going to introduce Chuck McDowell. You may remember him. He was back uh, with us in March, and he'll be providing the presentation tonight. I see that. Okay, thank you. Give us a test before we get going. Okay. Um, thanks for having me again. Um, Chuck McDowell, uh, landscape architect with Bassett. Last time I was here, our company name was DCG Watershed. So you'll see a little bit of a change there. It was a rebrand, not a, not a change in the company. So just FYI on that. Um, I'm presenting an update on the Jenkins Creek Trail Master Plan and Phase 1 design. We're at the 90% uh, draft milestone of the project. So working with Ethan and city staff um, on updates here over the next month or so based on some of the conversations we've had with the city, their review um, with the uh, Parks and Rec Commission and with you all. So just an overview of what I'm going to share tonight is a kind of a revisit of uh, the scope of work, just as a reminder, um, give you an update on the community engagement that we've done since our last update. Uh, provide an update on the master planning work and the phase one design work that's been done and um, give you an overview of next steps. So project schedule, um, what we've done since our last conversation in March is uh, FACET worked with Ethan and the city submitted an application for um, 
grant funding for the phase one design through uh, State of Washington RCO. Um, and we've been working on the development of the preferred alternatives for the master plan for phase one design, working towards our final deliverable into um, August. So the next few slides are just a, a refresher on some of the material that we covered in March, just as a reminder. Um, so first gonna talk about the, the Jenkins Creek Trail master plan and the scope of work there. So as a reminder, it is uh, roughly a three mile corridor um, connecting um, Lake Point Urban Village site on the north end, northeast down to um, Covington Way on the south end near the BPA site. This slide shows kind of where we landed with our design recommendations at that stage in the project. And um, really the goals that we had moving forward from that point were to define a preferred alignment, but also maintain alternate alignments so that the city has flexibility when we look to um, building out an implementation plan for the master plan. Uh, switching over to the phase one site, the um, project area was connecting Jenkins Creek Park on the north end down to Kent Kangley on the south end. Um, the goal for that project was really to define what is going to be the first phase of implementation for the Jenkins Creek Trail. The options that we presented at that time looked at um, different alignments through the site that identified kind of what would be the first step versus what would be a master plan vision. And some of the conversation that we had at that time with city staff was about identifying what the first trail alignment is that's implementable in the short term, considering environmental impacts, cost impacts, and also maintaining a vision for the site that could create a loop trail that ties into Jenkins Creek Park in the future. Um, update on engagement since our last conversation. So I was out at the, the Covington Makers Market, and I think I saw a couple of you out there. It was a pretty stormy day, so um, I appreciate all the folks that did show up that day. Um, we also put out a online survey at that same time that shared the same materials that were presented at the Makers Market. And since March, we have completed our stakeholder engagement and outreach. And so from that point onward, we had talked to the Covington Water District, uh, BPA, and folks from the Muckleshoot, Snoqualmie, and Duwamish tribes. Next couple of slides are showing some of the materials that we presented in the online survey, as well as at the Makers Market. And um, we focused both on the master plan and the phase one site. So we presented some of the materials that we presented to you all in March. Um, this was focused on the master plan vision, some of the planning priorities, as well as sharing the draft alignments for the master plan. And for the phase one site, we shared a bit of an overview of what the site was, some of the character of the existing site, and also uh, where we landed with the preferred direction on the phase one site. And so that um, is the trail that connects Kent Kangley behind Red Robin runs along the top of the, the slope adjacent to the Home Depot site and ties into Jenkins Creek Park uh, on the east side of the, the, the park um, and uh, highlighted the conversations that we've had about minimizing environmental impacts, being cost, cost co conscious, and um, really finding a, a solution to the trail design that can be implemented in a shorter time frame. So with that material being presented, we asked the community a few, few questions. Um, do they agree with the trail planning priorities that we defined through past engagement, through conversations with city staff? Um, we asked them what stories should be shared and celebrate as we look at interpretive opportunities and educational opportunities within both the master plan and the phase one site. Um, and then we asked them if the alignments that we shared in those plan views uh, represent their values and priorities for trail planning that's occurring um, in Covington. So related to both the master plan and the phase one site, um, over 90% of respondents agreed that the trail alignments represented their priorities and vision for the trail. So that's great to hear. Um, they appreciated the attention and um, minimization of environmental impacts on both uh, scenarios and expressed 
uh, the need for additional attention and operational awareness around safety, security, and maintenance issues as we get nearer to implementation. So I'm going to move on to an update on where we are with the master plan right now. And I won't dig into this, but this is essentially the table of contents for the master plan document that we'll be working on over the next month and a half or so. Uh, one of those sections uh, is about design guidelines and setting this trail design standard. So I'm going to walk through a few different slides here that represent um, the standard cross sections that we're proposing for this trail. And we're really looking to wash dot um, shared use path standards as well as King County design standards to uh, use as a starting point for design as we mentioned in our last meeting. So they, the on grade uh, trail on the left side of the slide here represents the, the base cross section for the trail. It's a 12 foot wide asphalt trail with two feet of gravel on either side and then a five foot wide maintenance area for uh, maintaining low vegetation for sight lines. On the right is uh, a modification of that where we would be nestling the trail within slopes and integrating retaining walls. Uh, the two conditions outlined here are representative of the, of the trail where it would run adjacent to a roadway. Um, so the one on the left has a vegetated buffer between the road and the trail, and this would be used where there is adequate space adjacent to the roadway um, and traffic is under 35 miles an hour. Uh, where we don't have quite that amount of space or where we have traffic going more than 35 miles an hour, we would have a concrete barrier. And um, so that, that slide on, or the, the section on the right is uh, the uh, one that we had a conversation about in the commission meeting. And so the, the barrier that you see there is a, a concrete barrier and the recommendation from the commission was to add a you know a steel railing on top of that, which is a pretty pretty common condition you see uh, often on, on bridges. So that'll be uh, something that we will be incorporating into the design. The final two sections here represent um, the trail where it crosses creeks and wetlands. And so this would be using either uh, concrete boardwalks or prefabricated bridges. And the goal here is to maintain emergency and maintenance access um, for these portions of the trail. And then the preferred standard for an underpass crossing on, uh, on the right there. And we also recognize that some of the existing conditions and, and um, as built conditions may uh, require the modification from some of these basic standards. So this slide here is the um, proposed master plan map. And what's outlined on this slide are um, a west alignment and an east alignment as the primary alignments that we're carrying forward in design. And we are uh, referring to the west alignment as the preferred alignment. And I'm gonna walk through a little more detail of how we've segmented out that alignment. And then the east alignment represents alternatives that could be explored within individual feasibility studies of um, future implementation scenarios. So giving the city the opportunity to uh, diverge from a preferred alignment if the conditions call for it. Also noted on this plan are um, connector trails. And so those will be um, minor connections between roadways or neighborhoods and uh, providing the, the connections to the trail itself from existing neighborhood centers or business districts. Um, a major and minor trailheads are noted on here. And so the major trailheads that you'll see are gonna be located at Founders Park, at Jenkins Creek Park, and then a new proposed major trailhead would be located up north near uh, SR18 along the existing frontage road. So a major trailhead is going to have parking, um, a restroom, and that those are proposed at the two parks, but not necessarily at the frontage road. And then additional trail amenities like bike fixing stations, um, receptacles, wayfinding information, um, a more substantial kiosk to let people know that they're entering the trail system. Uh, minor trailheads are going to be pedestrian entrances into the trail, so it'll come along with some signage, wayfinding, like pet way station, but not too much more than that. Uh, I'm going to walk through a series of how we've uh, 
broken up these, these trails. And so I'm gonna focus on the primary alignment or the west alignment. And you'll see in the kind of the wrap up slide here that we've broken these up in order to do cost estimating. And they also serve as implementable phases or smaller sections that the city could kind of take off because they're a little bit more bite-sized than the full um, trail system all at once. So segment A here um, is including a planned development that the city is currently um, working to permit, uh, connecting the Seuss Creek corridor um, to uh, 165th place. And so that development is gonna be building a 10 foot wide uh, asphalt trail associated with that. So it'll be building off of that existing planned development. Um, it also includes um, a trail adjacent to Covington Way connecting 165th place down to Wax Road. So that'll be a condition where um, we'll have a trail adjacent to the roadway. And this next slide, these next two slides are not in your council packet, but they were added late, but show um, renderings of those two conditions. So the condition you see here up in the upper right is existing, and then the larger image is the proposed condition. So we have adequate space. We will include a vegetated buffer between the roadway and the trail. This slide was also added, and so this represents more of a constrained condition. And we did include kind of the railing on top of that barrier on this one, but essentially the roadway and the trail have to be um, combined in order to maintain the kind of the necessary width within the right of way. Segment B connects um, the intersection of Wax Road and Covington Way up to Founders Park. So the trail would run uh, on the west side of Jenkins Creek and would utilize the critical area buffer. And so the area is adjacent to wetlands, but would aim to avoid wetland impacts where feasible. Segment C is improvements within Founders Park and kind of recognizing that we're an interim condition where Founders Park is gonna be open soon. There's a vision for a, a larger master plan within the park, and then there's a vision for integrating the trail um, at some point in the future. So the image on this slide, upper right, shows some of the existing trails that are built within you know, that near creek condition within the park. So I think that's roughly a four or five foot wide gravel pathway. Um, it, in the future, when this section is built, it would essentially be upgraded to be a 12 foot wide paved surface that connects through the park. Segment D connects Founders Park up to Kent Kangley, again, running along the west side of Jenkins Creek within the critical area of buffers. Segment E is a crossing of Kent Kangley. And so this is a scenario where we've recognized a need for a future study of what's the best way to get across the, the road here, um, whether it's a, the planned undercrossing associated with the bridge project or a crossing along the west side of the creek there. Segment F connects Kent Kangley up to Jenkins Creek Park, and this would be um, the portion that we identified in the phase one design that would contribute to um, the larger kind of Jenkins Creek Park trail loop. And this image here shows a boardwalk condition. So where we have um, wetlands in these areas, it would be um, built out as this concrete boardwalk to limit impacts on the wetlands. Segment G connects Jenkins Creek Park up to 262nd place running along the west side of Jenkins Creek. Crossing 262nd place, segment H connects the um, 262nd place up to the existing frontage road. Segment I um, builds out a portion of the trail that connects the existing frontage road over to Lake Point and also would look to upgrade or improve any portions of the frontage road that need resurfacing. But the intent there would be to reuse mm -hmm. the existing surface of the roadway. Mm -hmm. um, this would also include the creation of the major trailhead at that location, which would include parking, signage, um, emergency access and emergency vehicle turnaround. Uh, this is an image that shows the repurposing of the existing roadway on Frontage Road, and it's in pretty great shape. Yeah. So I think in our image, we just cleared out the leaves, really. <laughs> uh, 
And then further to the east here is the connection along the washed off right of way. So this is running adjacent to SR 18 along the south of the highway. Um, and we've been working with WashDOT to, um, you know, make sure that they don't have any build out plans for that area and that they would have, um, see this as a compatible use to uh, their property. And then to kind of summarize this, I won't go into these numbers in, in a lot of detail, but essentially this is the full cost estimate for the master plan trail alignment. And this includes construction costs, soft costs, so project design fees, um, fees to get surveys done and geotech and all the, the uh, administrative tasks that we need to, uh, to do the design work, as well as acquisition. And uh, the total cost here is around 36 million. And, and if you um, have a great memory or revisit the slide deck that we shared in March, I think we aimed, uh, we shared around 52 million for the preferred alignment mm -hmm. or the, um, the alignment one at that time. And we were able to really try and isolate uh, creek crossings, isolate crossings of wetlands and minimize the costs in, in doing that to find a streamlined approach to the trail planning effort. And um, this is a slide that we're, we're still working on here. This is another one that um, Parks Commission had some recommendations on. And, and um, if you recall the earlier comment, um, that was related to what we're calling phase two and five in here and how we kind of find the, the termination of one of those or the other. So we'll be working on this as well. I think the, the main thing to note for the phasing of the trail is it's really going to uh, need to be flexible. So we're going to propose a logical phased approach for trail and the home implementation. However, there's a lot of other pieces that are going to fall in place over the coming you know, five to 10 years that guide this. So when does Lake Point urban villages, trails come online? What's the, what's the time frame for wanting to connect to those? Um, how quickly is King County gonna advance their work on the Seuss Creek Southern extension? When will you wanna tie into that? And then, um, you know, with, whether it's partnerships or looking at land use changes that allow the city to acquire tracts of critical areas or easements for trails, uh, property ownership turnover is gonna be another piece that guides this in the long term. And with that, the, the major updates that we're recommending or recommendations that we're proposing for the master plan are to up, update regulatory and planning documents. So the comprehensive plan, the transportation plan, um, any of the capital improvement projects that have been identified adjacent or crossing the trail network to make sure that this is integrated fully within uh, those projects. Um, to develop funding strategies to maintain um, the approach for acquisition of land within critical areas tracks, which allows the city to also build trails in those areas, and then to continue outreach and maintain partnerships that have been developed in this process. So the last few slides here that I'm going to share are about the, the phase one design update. And in the black box there is what we now have defined as the phase one site. And if you recall our uh, meeting in March, and the slide that I shared earlier, um, we had previously defined the scope of work between Jenkins Creek Park and Kent Kangley um, in conversations with city staff, with the, the RCO grant representatives, um, and looking kind of closer at the Jenkins Creek Park master plan, we decided to expand the uh, project to include trail upgrades within Jenkins Creek Park. And that would kind of leverage the grant funding that we're asking for to make improvements not only for this trail, but provide greater connectivity, mm -hmm. doubling the amount of trails and working towards the Jenkins Creek Park Master Plan as well. Kind of turn the page here. Um, on the right side is Kent Kangley. On the left side um, is uh, Jenkins Creek Park there. Uh, so the trail in this portion is proposed as a 10 foot wide asphalt trail. And the reason that we're not proposing a 12 foot wide asphalt trail is because it doesn't yet have that greater connectivity that would drive the need for a wider trail profile. And so in our design, what we're proposing is starting with 10 foot wide, which is washed out in the state's and the county's recommendation and allowing it for um, widening at some point in the future if the greater trail connectivity is, is achieved. So within, within this plan, we've got a few different proposed trail types. 
the major blue one and a portion of the orange one represents that 12, or sorry, that 10 foot wide asphalt pavement that will be fully accessible. Um, trails within Jenkins Creek Park, the, the loop on the upland portion will be um, renovated if there are areas where there are root intrusion or there's mm -hmm. erosion off the side. So improving existing trails that can be patched. Um, and then we are also proposing to um, remove the steep trail that connects the upland down to the pond and replace that with a gravel pathway that um, also includes timber steps. And so we're creating a fully accessible route up okay. to this trail in either direction, north and south, and um, taking what is somewhat of a dangerous pathway and converting it to a more of a rustic condition. Mm -hmm. So uh, walking through the, the detailed plans here, we're starting down on the south end of the study area next to Kent Kangley. So the, um, the trail will start with a, a minor trailhead. So it'll include um, signage, a pet way station, um, some uh, pavement markings to indicate that the trail is beginning and ending. Uh, this will kind of run behind um, uh, Red Robin there and will uh, find its way north. So this is looking from north to south behind Red Robin where the improved trail would kind of sneak between um, the wetland area and the current development coming down to Kent Kangley. Continuing north adjacent to Home Depot, the trail follows the existing city property um, on the high side of a retaining wall. So no additional impacts to the, the Jenkins Creek or its wetlands there. We've also identified a seating node that would provide uh, benches, a rest area, interpretive signage. And it's shown on the left side of this diagram, but within the next design phase, we'll kind of flush out where's the logical place to, to share information, to provide views and, and cite this in, in an appropriate way. This is the view looking north adjacent to Home Depot. So Home Depot on your right, the existing retaining wall, which will be modified with a new fence for um, security and safety purposes on the left. And then continuing uh, north uh, on the left side is the connection to the Jenkins Creek existing central pathway there. Uh, this is running through a property owned by MultiCare. And so uh, the city is, is working with MultiCare currently to uh, get a easement, purchase an easement through this property. Um, and where, it, uh, where the trail kind of heads to the, the plan um, north or east portion it is maintaining accessibility and you can see the, the cut through path that is sneaking downhill will be a timber timber step with gravel um, trail in order to provide that direct access. This is the view from the portion of the site that's currently owned by MultiCare. So there's a lot of four to eight inch Douglas fir trees in this area. So it'll provide upland woodland experience to, to route the trail through. The last two slides here are the Jenkins Creek Park upgrades here. And so the, the trail on the south end there that runs diagonally is an existing asphalt trail that will be um, demolished and replaced with a gravel trail um, with timber steps. And then the portion of the trail running through the park will be a new 10 foot wide asphalt trail. If we're able to repurpose some of the existing trail, we will. Um, but the intent would be to widen that to be 10 feet. And then on the upper portion of the plan outlined in red there, that's the existing trail that we would patch and replace any damaged asphalt. And then the trail terminates here at 264th place cul-de-sac and there's an existing trailhead to the park there. We would improve um, that with um, new signage and uh, pet waste station. And this is an area where in our commission meeting, they provided guidance to, um, uh, that was mentioned earlier that they suggested to provide additional clearing um, in that area to maintain site lines. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, also a slide that was not in your council packet, but provides an overview of the design here. And so, as I mentioned, this contributes to both the Jenkins Creek Trail Master Plan, as well as the Jenkins Creek Park Master Plan, uh, provides 0.72 miles of new trail, new and renovated trail. Um, there's educational seating areas, pedestrian trailheads, and then total project cost for this is 4.2 million. 
next steps for our team and uh, in working with the city are to finalize this master plan, finalize the phase one schematic design package, which is going to be a similar graphic package to what I shared just in the last few slides. We'll be completing a, a SEPA for the master plan, um, currently working on an agreement with MultiCare to finalize the, the easement purchase for the phase one trail. <laughs> And then from there, you know, we did submit the grant through RCO. Ethan submitted that grant in May. So we'll be awaiting the determination on that to um, understand our timeline for advancing design um, and establishing a, a timeline for construction of the phase one site. And then once that uh, is determined, we'll be advancing the site studies and design work. And that is all I have. So with that, I'll open it to questions. Great, thank you. Any questions? Yeah. Um, more comments. Uh, I really appreciate this very thorough presentation mm -hmm. going through the uh, proposed trail through all of the segments was really helpful for me to visualize and really see um, where it would be in the city, but also utilizing space that's already there in a really smart um, way. And I also appreciate the decreased um, cost since we saw it last mm -hmm. time. And uh, honestly, this is probably one of the most clear, thorough mm -hmm. presentations we've ever received on council. So kudos on just this next steps. It's really spelled out. I don't have any questions because I, that, it was so clear. Yeah, thank you. Thank great. Thank you. I thank you. And it was a great presentation. It very exciting. And I also appreciate the before and after so we can kind of get yeah. an understanding of what it looks like now and where we'll go. Um, on the funding strategies, do you anticipate going after grants per phase? So example, we're looking here at phase one and we're awaiting a grant award. So we've apply for a grant just for phase one, right? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. And then as, as we get closer to phase two, then apply for a grant for that? I would defer to, to Ethan's um, uh, approach on that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. His job is to find the money. Yeah. 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 I'll just okay. chime in that um, we're pretty focused on phase one right now, mm -hmm. uh, but, but the, City strategy has been to accumulate some parks capital dollars in our reserve that we can use as match and then go after grant dollars. Mm -hmm. So we would just be looking at trying to repeat that strategy um, unless there's some new windfall of revenue that comes our way. Okay, thank you. So one one final question. On phase one, the 4.2 million, does that include the cost of the multi-care easement? That does. Okay, thank you. Thank you, uh, Beth. I might be jumping the gun a little bit, but from the, because this is all great and everything they said, I mean, it's, it's really easy to visualize. I Would we then switch after phase one to the West preferred connector so that where the trailhead would come to an end at that cul-de-sac? Um, at the end of the street. Yeah, you know, I can at the navigate top, us back. Uh, That's bit, not quite that far. It was one of the last slides. Um, the upper level of the Jenkins Creek Park, the area where you'd have like the pet way station and um, where they asked to clear, where they asked to do some clearing, it, where the where it kind of goes into a neighborhood. There's a cul-de-sac. Yeah, the hill yeah. There. So that would kind of end that, and then the second phase as we try to connect over to Lake Point probably would come from another part of the park. Or it, yeah, that's part of probably. the feasibility study that would okay. need to be worked through at that time. Um, okay. You know, I'll, um, just trying to figure out how to get from that yeah. part down over to the yeah. If I go back, actually, mm -hmm. two slides the to maybe the phasing and diagram. I mean, I saw that. So well. we've oh, um, nice. outlined in kind of the maroon color there. Mm -hmm. If I can find my notes, um, you know, what is phase four? And so you'll see the diverging routes from mm -hmm. Jenkins Creek Park up to either um, the frontage road or through the neighborhood okay, and then that. up to Lake Point. So okay. um, again, that's going to be determined by uh, the feasibility of acquiring certain properties over mm -hmm. time and mm -hmm. the city's strategy and the, the strategy that's outlined in the master plan is really to look to land use changes in order to acquire portions of properties. Okay. And right. so that, that time frame is maybe what's going to guide that decision-making process. Okay. Thank you. 
Other questions? Um, I just had a couple of comments. Uh, I'll just reiterate and echo. I appreciate the thoroughness. Really um, helps to visualize uh, what it would look like, and uh, so well done. Um, you know, just some things I, I when we're building this trail, um, just want us to be cognizant of some of the materials we pick to to build the trails. Hopefully, that's in the plan. Make sure these surfaces are are porous so that we're not getting run off on them um, and be interested in seeing what type of asphalt we select because there are some that work in um, some crumb rubber and other things that can be detrimental to salmon. So we don't want to totally undo what we were doing before. But um, the I like the scene where we were going through the Doug Furs that you mentioned. Um, just want to make sure that we're minimizing the amount of tree cutting we have to do in those areas. So if we need to move the trail to save a tree, I'd, I'd appreciate that. Um, but then on the flip, if we're in there and we're putting a trail and there's invasive species in there, blackberries and whatnot, we should take the opportunity to get those out of there. So just be thinking about, th about that as well. Um, and then along the place where Red Robin and, and Home Depot, I'd be curious to see if there's any thoughts and, you know, obviously if we had money, we can do anything, but screening along there to make that, um, maybe a little more attractive. Um, I haven't spent any time behind uh, uh, Red Robin, so I don't know what it looks like, but I assume it's not the most attractive. Um, um, and then I guess just some questions on, you know, you mentioned at the beginning there were people, 96% or so are supporting this. Just curious, what did the 4% say? What was it? Yeah. yeah, so I think the from a master plan perspective, um, it was, uh, more focused on environmental impact. So the prepared, proposed preferred alignment of the west alignment does cross the creek. It does cross wetlands. Okay. Um, and so that was some of the comments that came through. And then the, uh, I believe we had somewhere along the lines, lines of 96% support for the master plan and 92 maybe for the phase one site. And the phase one site is is probably reflecting some of the the comments that you just okay. made about being adjacent to Home Depot in a parking lot. And um, it's not the nicest experience compared to being down low next right. to the creek. Um, but uh, I think folks acknowledge that this is also working towards the master plan and that when you look at a three mile section that hopefully connects to Lake Point and the King County, you're going to have yeah. pragmatic sections that 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 find their way through business areas. So there was an acknowledgement okay. of that as well. Great. Um, and then just quickly, a couple other things. Uh, curious as to potential interpretive themes and how we're going to land on those? Is this going to be a public process? How how, how are those going to be selected? So in the, the last phase of design, this, this occurred, I believe in March, we had an initial um, interpretive session that had representatives from um, City Parks Commission and, and uh, Parks. And uh, that was really the jumping off point for giving us some ideas on uh, where we could start with some of these conversations. We've been working with an interpretive designer to do a little bit of background history. And within the master plan, what we're proposing is a process that outlines um, a recommendation for an, an interpretive planning process Great. that would be a bit more robust, that would identify um, the, you know, the exact places where some of these ideas would come through. Um, some of the strategies, whether it's forming a committee or an advisory mm -hmm. group for the project um, and doing additional outreach. So those are recommendations that we're um, including in the master plan. Yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. I think uh, casting the net far and wide for not only those physical locations, but the potential themes, I think is going to help make this trail uh, feel more like it's owned by the community if they have a say in what gets interpreted there. Um, so yeah, I encourage you to, to spend some time and energy on figuring out how we do that. And if I may, I just add one more point to that. In our um, conversations with the Muckleshoot and Snoqualmie tribe, they ab absolutely expressed interest to be okay. part of that process. Okay. Perfect. Um, our company's worked with Snoq the Snoqualmie tribe on other parks where they have provided interpretive services, whether it's just interpreting existing signage in the shoot seat language, um, or developing that signage and 
that was definitely a theme that was reflect, reflected in the interest of the community in the survey was to incorporate um, that indigenous knowledge and, and those folks within the design process. Outstanding. Um, and it just made me think we'd had a group a while back that talked about uh, otter habitat in this area and in Covington in particular. It'd be interesting to go back and see who's commented, uh, had public communications with us and make sure we're including them, um, wildlife groups, possibly others, cultural history groups. Um, so that's outstanding. I, I lied, I got two more things and I'm done. Um, I really appreciated your mentioning partnerships on this. So that cost, I too appreciate that it's come down, but I'd be curious to, to see what the potential is for partnerships there. Um, so if Multicare is interested in an easement, you know, are there other ways they possibly support um, that trail? Um, I don't want this to turn into a, a series of billboards along there, but you know, that's the name of the game sometimes is getting some people that have some skin to put in. So uh, I'd be curious to learn more about that. So, so from, from our conversations with Multicare, and I know this is this is also predated me, they've expressed interest in tying into the trail network. And so in, in talking with them about this first phase, obviously it's a bit disconnected from their campus. They're very supportive right. of the city, um, including a trail through this area, regardless of if they can tie into it directly. Um, but I, I know they're very excited about the potential for a loop trail that ties directly into their um, campus. Yeah, we certainly haven't gotten into any conversations with them about any commitment right. because that's a future phase of the project. And so um, other than their excitement and they've expressed interest in including, uh, you know, thematic elements or us including thematic elements like a healing pathway mm -hmm. or trails of celebrate native plants will contribute to some of their goals as well. Okay. And then just finally, I apologize if I had missed this. Um, uh, have we, is this, do we settle on the name Jenkins Creek Trail? Is that going to be the name of the trail or is it possible we could name it something else? Um, I mean, it's, it's a thought that I'm opposed to it, but it also might be an opportunity to engage the public to say, can we name this trail? Yeah, there's, else? there's not been any decisions on that. This okay. Pretty much just a planning name that we're Great. using. Because okay. I think there is potential for you know, engaging the community on, hey, get a, you know some ideas on what to call this trail. Uh, Spokane has the Centennial Trail that, um, and uh, goes all the way to Idaho, um, you know, Seuss Creek. Um, what's the one downtown Seattle? It goes, um, Burke Gilman, you know. So mm -hmm. anyway, I think there's an opportunity to at least solicit, you know, their input and say, what what are, what's something that captures this the essence of this trail. So, oh, that's good to know. All right, I will stop there. Any other questions, comments? All right, no, thank you very much. Yeah, thank that you all. Great. Have a good night. All right, move on to new business item number four, consider artwork for utility box, vinyl wraps. And I think, is that Jonathan? Just doing that? Oh, yeah. Thank you for your patience. Absolutely. Uh, good evening, council members. My name is Jonathan Saida. I am the Covington Parks Project Manager and the uh, staff liaison to the Covington Arts Commission as well. Uh, tonight, I'm going to be presenting the Arts Commission's recommended art selections for the Phase 4 2024 Utility Box Vinyl Wraps Program. Just a few details about the submissions. Uh, we did a call uh, beginning on May 1st and concluded that call on June 12th, so approximately a six week call. Um, you can look through the call text, but it's explaining what the project is and what kind of uh, artworks in general we're looking for for this program. Uh, the theme uh, of this particular call was the Pacific Northwest and what it means to the artist. We had uh, 32 artworks submitted from 16 applicants, and the number of utility boxes in this phase four are six, five of which are the last remaining unwrapped 
utility boxes in Covington and one box at Founders Park that we're gonna be wrapping as well. Our review criteria was based on uh, aesthetic merit and graphic strength of the proposed design, uh, interpretation of the Pacific Northwest theme, and the practical application of the design to be translated onto a vinyl wrap. Is the artwork too bright? Is it too dark? Things of that sort of nature. One more note about the call is that um, we did a pretty localized call. We did all of our uh, promotion through the City of Covington website, uh, social media, um, a piece in the um, Summer Rec Guide, and all of our submissions that came in from those 16 artists, I believe two were from Northern Pierce County, the rest were from uh, Central and Southern King County. Hmm. So uh, good to have some, some more localized artists uh, to, to yeah. look through. Uh, and here are the recommendations from the Arts Commission. Uh, Rosa Krigliz's Abstract Native American Forums. Uh, Rosa is an artist based out of Federal Way. Uh, Hazel Richards, uh, Untitled. Uh, Hazel is uh, from Tequila. Two selections from Marie Marquez, Apex and Little Voyagers. Uh, Marie is uh, from Covington. And finally, uh, Anya Monet Jenkins, uh, two works, uh, The Beautiful Details and Among Artists. And uh, Anya is from Kent. Okay. And those are the recommendations from the Arts Commission. And I'm uh, happy to answer any questions if you have them. Yes. Yeah, Can you sorry. refresh my memory uh, and confirm that the submissions cannot be then put in another town? Like if we choose, let's say, it, work by a Kent artist, we're not going to see it on a Kent box. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Other that was it. Yeah, Joe. So um, I'm looking through all these and I think they're great. I, yeah. I do love them. I, I have favorites, of course, that weren't picked. I, I think are great and I, I would really wish we had a place for them. But I do have one question. And I, I'm uh, if we look at the um, all of the submissions, we look at submission in, it looks like it's a bunch of different uh, dragonflies. Crestwood Elementary in 1998 was the re, uh, presented to the state house, the state senate, and had Governor Gary Locke at Crestwood signing the bill that made the dragonfly the state insect. Why did we not choose something that is prominent to Covington? That is something that, because of Covington residents, all of the state gets to benefit from. Now, don't get me wrong. I think there's other options we could have gone with for something to that extent. But I am just wondering why we didn't choose to do something like that. Um, as a former curator, I have my own personal preferences as far as the artworks that were um, uh, presented. Um, but as not being a member of the Arts Commission, just being the staff liaison to the Arts Commission, I don't feel like I should speak for the Arts Commission uh, under those circumstances. I would guess because they're extremely dark and I'm, seeing that's, this that's on my, box would be difficult to even tell what they are. That's my thought too. I, I, yeah, I, I believe in the vetting process. You know, there were some there were some great works that were uh, presented. Uh, there were some nice watercolor works. There were some works that, you know, had a lot of dominant whites and blacks in them. And I believe that was discussed with those particular, uh, that particular submission that you're referring to. Mm -hmm. And there was some concern that um, the works graphically wouldn't translate well to a utility box that, you know, a lot of people are passing by in their cars and, and whatnot. And you want to have like a, a strong graphic work that people will be able to kind of quickly engage. And so uh, I believe that was the discussion that kind of took place around that. Other questions? Um, so I know one of the things that's that's come up in past art selections or conversations <clears throat> by residents, I, I think everything, again, all, these are all fantastic artists and submissions, but having something with a space needle on it in our city limits has kind of been something that has, 
folks here don't necessarily associate with themselves with Seattle per se, as we're trying to build our own brand identity. And I don't know if there was any discussion about that because that appears to be one of the selections. Um, everything else is PNW and it could probably go with anything, but do, do were you there or privy to the thought behind picking that one over versus maybe one that has a mountain or uh, the trees or something that yeah uh, yeah uh i didn't know jenkins work uh, on the left there the the beautiful details mm -hmm. i know in the discussion of that work there was not a lot of attention to the space needle itself but to the totality of the different mm -hmm. uh things represented mm -hmm. um you know, when you're talking about the theme of like the Pacific Northwest and what it means to you, mm -hmm. uh, personally, I was kind of surprised, even as like an arts person myself, that there wasn't more like sports representation in any way. <laughs> um, and I think this was the only work that actually had like a, a football in there of some mm -hmm. sort. But mm -hmm. I, I recall in this discussion, you know, the the sort of variance between apples and garlic and orchids and coffee and, and, and things that are kind of known to the state as a whole mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. were, was kind of discussed. But to be honest, what people really locked in on that was the Covington logo yeah. on, the, on the laptop. And, and I think that's what drew the Arts mm -hmm. Commission to mm -hmm. wanting to select mm -hmm. that particular one because there was like yeah. a very specific shout out to Covington. Sure, to Covington. Yeah, that's fine. Sure. Okay. Is there, would there be a way to wrap it so that like that? Is more noticeable and highlight it. Yeah. You know, highlight the, our city versus. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, it, the needle is a symbol of the north. I, West. It is. I mean, it, I, if I, I would think of that. You My know. husband actually just got a tattoo of the needle in Mount Rainier, and he lives in Yeah, right. Well, uh, you, you have anything more? Uh, no, I was just okay. wondering if there's a way to maybe incorporate yeah. it so our city things show a little bit more. Uh, that con that consideration could be made for the selection of which box we're going to wrap and which part of the design would be the more prominent mm -hmm. facing one. Mm -hmm. So, okay. we could look at that. Debbie's hand first. Name Jill. So I would just propose that we have a contest to see who who can name the most uh, artists oh. on, <laughs> on, the, on the right. All right. Mm -hmm. I, I only got three, but mm -hmm. okay. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> Five. Jill. Five. Um, <laughs> Uh, speaking of the of that one on the artist, um, as I Pacific Northwest music, we we can we all have that that area of thought that we have for it. But my question is, uh, why is Ray Charles in the uh, thing about the Pacific Northwest and music? Because that looks like Ray Charles uh, at the it, piano. It, it is Ray Charles. Ray, yeah. Char Ray Charles has a uh, is in Seattle as a young. Musician. Okay. There, there was a period of time where he was here and uh, had worked with Quincy Jones, I believe. Okay. Yeah. So I, I was just wondering because I, I, when I think of Pacific Northwest, this is weird. This is the old band geek in me. Is where's Kenny G? He's yeah. He's the bald guy. Any, uh, <laughs> any other comments, questions? Um, could you go back to the one with the um, uh, killer whale and uh, I think the yes. Yeah, that one. Uh, Really dramatic. I noticed uh, for many of these, they are in landscape form, and mm -hmm. this one is in portrait form. Mm -hmm. How would that work on uh, wrapping a box? Don't would they? Would it be a smaller box? How does that? Do we need to shift that from landscape or portrait the, to landscape? Uh, the the vinyl um, wraps uh, uh, contractors that do this sort of work are pretty adept at adapting okay. the, the, mm -hmm. the different vinyls, but okay. we do have some boxes that are more vertical than okay. they are horizontal. So uh, we would probably want to match that particular okay. work to mm -hmm. one that fit that sort of off random or not. Uh, any other questions? All right. Does the uh, council wish to take action? Uh, Jill. Uh, I move to approve the utility box final wrap selections for Covington as recommended by the Art Commission. I second. Okay. Been moved and seconded to uh, approve the utility box for vinyl wrap selections for Covington as recommended by the Arts Commission. Joe, please speak, speak to your motion. I have always had ones that I have liked that the Arts Commission didn't pick, but I've also always really liked the ones that the Arts Commission has picked. I, I wish we had more options to put these uh, 
art <laughs> in the city. I want, I want, I want more places for them. I really hope that we can keep some of these options handy and put them into Founders Park, put them into mm -hmm. uh, the the new Jenkins Creek Trail, put them into the new City Hall, put them all over the place. I'd love to see that because these are all great and I think they're all deserving of a place in the city. But the ones that the Arts Commission picked, I, I can honestly say I can nitpick it, but I love every single one of those six that they picked. So I am very uh, pro this these good ones here. Jennifer. Agreed. I mean, uh, Arts Commission always does a great job picking out art. I did like the mushroom and the fern ones. I'm not going to lie. I mm -hmm. personally would have chosen that, but I'm not on Arts Commission. And um, I take their advice mm -hmm. seriously as a group of volunteers that coordinates the effort and, you know, um, does all the, the time and labor of love to present these to us. And uh, I appreciate their service and look forward to these amazing works of art popping up in our community soon. Great. Anyone else wishing to speak for or against the motion? Okay, uh, so it's been moved and seconded to approve the utility box vinyl wrap selection for Covington as recommended by the Arts Commission. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, you're going to approve. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Uh, new business item number five, review the 2024 summit action items list. Uh, that would be Regan. Thank you, council. So uh, as Sean mentioned, these are the action items that came out of the 2024 summit, and this is a mid-year update. So I'll just kind of briefly go through where we're at for these items. Um, item number one and two on your sheet deal with the ballot measure and those have all been completed. Item three is creating a summary document detailing, detailing the process for LIDs or local improvement districts. And that has been completed and provided to council. Item number four is working on developing a cost estimate to upgrade sidewalks in Timberlane. As we've been going through this process and then speaking with the HOA, they actually indicated that they have some funds available for improving their walkways. Not enough to bring them up to code like we'd require to take them over, but uh, something that they're thinking about and working on. So we're communicating with them kind of what the local improvement district is as well and how that could uh, work in their HOA. Item six is amending the code to prohibit BESS or battery energy storage systems. We brought the moratorium to council, the council adopted. Uh, we've been working with PSE and also have this on our long range plan for 2024. Items seven, eight, and nine are somewhat related. They are regarding improving the levels of service at parks and specifically garbage pickups and tree and shrub care at Jenkins Creek Park which we've done and also uh, preparing a resource plans for our other parks so that we can understand levels of service that are needed there. And on August 13th, we have a study session set to discuss funding options for parks operation and maintenance per this item uh, that we'll do with council again on August 13th. Item number 10, we're creating uh, graphics and other branding material and events on what we're now calling the town center lawn. So you'll start seeing uh, this come out very soon and some events uh, this fall. Item 11 is uh, to compile a list. What we've done is compiled a list of different traffic calming measures for use in the city of Covington. And we're establishing a rating criteria for the different options that there are so that we can, when something's submitted for a traffic calming measure, we can use that rating criteria to determine which option is best in that use. And then item 12 are the statues of karma. So CETUS and the Arts Commission have met and discussed this. We've worked together. We've reached out to several vendors that would build the statues and got pricing and shipping costs and whatnot. Currently what we're working on is what are the best engineered methods for securing these uh, to the sidewalks and locations around town so that it's kind of a uniform installation process. So we've had discussions about, you know, maybe the city should do all the installation of these. So it's a, a uniform thing, but still something we're, we're working through. And then item 13, the last item was removing the three mile radius rule from the commissions. And that was recently done and passed by the city council. 
So happy to address any questions council may have at this time. Thank you, Regan. Any questions for Regan? Yes, Jennifer. Um, I believe just a quick one. The number uh, four for the walkways in Timberlane, what does SKLCMT colon mean? Oh, that, that's a comment by a staff member. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, that's yeah, it's, it's just identifying which staff member made the comment. Okay. All right, and um, and also just to thank you for uh, providing these updates. I find it super helpful. Thank you. You bet. Other questions, comments? No? Okay. Um, no other questions or comments. All right, well, uh, thank you, Regan. Um, appreciate the update. And um, I guess with that, we'll move on to new business item number six, uh, authorize the city manager to execute a mutual settlement agreement and release of claims between the city of Covington and Brooke Cal, uh, I don't know what, the TB uh, WA1 LLC regarding the Covington connector construction claim. Going to be no presentation on this, so discussed it earlier. In and I want to recuse myself just to oh, yes, your Jennifer discussion. Oh, yes, Jennifer recused himself. Um, okay. I, yeah. To say right behind me on mm -hmm. the side of the Thank you. So does the council, oh, well, wait. Council wish to take action. Uh, I move to authorize the city manager to execute a mutual settlement agreement and release of claims between the city of Covington and Brooke Cal regarding the Scarcella Covington connector claim. Is there a second? second. Okay, I, I heard Beth first. So it's been moved and seconded to authorize the city manager to execute a mutual settlement agreement and release of claims between the city of Covington and Brooke Cal regarding the Scarcella Covington connector claim. That okay. okay. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Is there anything else we need to do on that, Mark? That covers it. Thank you. Okay, great. Well, now my paperwork's all messed up. Um, so that's the end of yeah. So I guess we put Jennifer back in. Mm -hmm. Jennifer. Um, so that's the end of new business, future agenda items. We have that. I don't know what I did with there. Um, are there any additions or anything else council would like to see on new business? Yeah. No, I'm super, I have it somewhere. No, I'm, I'm good. Okay. Um, then we'll move on to council staff comments. I guess we'll start with the chief down there. Uh, thank you. Uh, speak very quickly about fireworks uh, and our response uh, this year and the call volume. Uh, this year we had uh, an increase in fireworks calls. Uh, we the last few years have sat below twenties. This year we were at thirty, uh, and that was with uh, nine one being quite uh, backed up. So we may have had more that just uh, quit trying. Uh, there was 53 total calls, uh, 30 for fireworks, uh, which is an increase in the percentage of calls that we get for fireworks. We are now we had 56 percent this uh, last Fourth of July. The previous two years have been in the low 40s as a percentage. Um, so things we did differently this last year uh, is we hired two security guards at CCP mm -hmm. uh, at a cost of $1,600. They were there between 7 p.m. and 1 a.m. Uh, we did not have any damage at the park like we did the year prior. Um, we also adjusted our patrol response uh, to be more visible at the end of the Lake Meridian event. Uh, we placed them uh, on Kent Kingley so that uh, they were visible when that event got out uh, and we prevented, potentially prevented uh, some major issues with the retailers this last year. Uh, a couple of those parking lots were very trashed. I don't have any data on whether there was more or less fireworks shot off. That's mm -hmm. not really something I can say or uh, speak to, but uh, that's kind of the report out on that. Okay. Any questions on that? Yeah. Thank you for that information. Um, 
On the calls that police went out on, were there any citations where they actually observed it? No, there were no citations issued. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah. No, just appreciate the pro proactive approach because yeah. that, that $1,600 could have saved, it likely saved much more than that in fixing and repairing when we have issues at that park. Yeah, there was one brief incident right mm -hmm. after the park closed. A kid tried to run in and light a firework and was stopped by security. Okay. Uh, nice. So they must they must have gone down to Elk Run Farm because their porta potty got blown up <laughs> and they had to replace it. But oh. well, uh, yeah, seconding um what Beth said, I really appreciate that. And um recognizing what happened last year and um you know the damage and the the fire and all that i i think mm -hmm. that investment is definitely worth um mm -hmm. continuing going forward and hopefully people uh, as we do this learn and it just becomes muscle memory those these aren't places to let up fireworks so um thank you um anything else that's all i have okay uh ethan uh nothing for me tonight thank you okay uh don uh, nothing tonight. Thank you. Okay. Casey? Uh, nothing for me tonight either. Thank you. All right. Selena? Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, can you hear me? Y yeah. No. Okay. You just can't see me yet. I don't know what's happening here. Oh, there we go. Hey, good evening, Council. Um, I just have a couple things for you tonight. First thing is um, Regan sent an email out before this meeting that... Uh, Covington received an approval for our housing element. Um, so from King County Affordable Housing Committee, this is a new process that King County introduced this last year, whereby they are reviewing all cities, all 39 cities, uh, housing elements to make sure that they're consistent with the countywide planning policies. Um, and so that's a really big uh a gate for us to have walked through today in order to move our comp plan forward. The comp plan is in draft form and under PSRC's review right now. So, um, you know, we're going to wait and kind of get all that information and bring, bring it all back to the planning commission to work through. The other thing that I wanted to also mention to you is how the how the council will be looking at the comp plan. I know I've mentioned this kind of, you know, briefly in other um, staff comments, but I am getting ready to hopefully get a memo to you all by the end of this week with kind of how this is going to work. But I just want to verbally give you a heads up. Um, and then obviously, if you have questions, you can run those back through Regan once you see the memo. So generally, when we have a comprehensive plan update, you know, we take each element to the planning commission and then we bring out the next element back to the city council and we kind of do this bouncing around um, back and forth. And this this time around, because of the updates that were contained in our comp plan, um, I like to describe them as more of a leveling up because we did such extensive work in 2015. And really what we did in for the next update, this 2024 update, was really just bridge those gaps. Where did things change under, under Vision 2050? Where did we need better alignment or better language? What changes happened within the city that we wanna account for in that? And then really just focus the updates on that version or make those updates to the version that we're moving forward in 2024. So what we're gonna do this year is more of a targeted um, discussion with the council. So I'm gonna be sending out a memo um, and some background information and obviously a copy of the comp plan and that you will be able to review on your own over the next month or so. During that time, we're gonna be asking that the council write down your questions, keep track of your questions, keep track of topic areas you think you wanna hear more about from staff. And then you're gonna send that, that information to Regan and I. I'm gonna take all of that information that you give us and kind of see where there's some themes where the council's aligned on wanting to hear in for information. Are there some really quick you know, explanations I can send off? And then use that, um, that feedback from you as the council to guide our study session conversations that we have planned in October and November. So it'll be a more for focused, targeted study session on the comp plan. Um, and then from there, we would take any feedback from the council. We are aiming to bring the full package to you by December 10th, which I believe will be your only meeting in December because I think the other one falls around Christmas, but I'll get with Kristen, verify that. Um, 
we want to hit that November 2024 deadline. However, amongst my peers in the planning world, folks are really concerned they might not meet that. So if we had to do a January um, approval, that would be good. But that's just a really quick overview. There'll be more in the memo that will be going out to you hopefully by the end of this week. Um, and then you will have a copy of that document to read at your leisure and enjoyment and make notes in the margins for staff. And then I'll just lastly say, I am SKL, if anyone. All right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> nice. There we go. Annie, All right, thank you. Any questions for SKL? <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you, Selena. Regan. You got Selena's code, SKL. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to point out our random acts of cleanup program that we've been doing. We started that earlier this year, and we now have over 40 volunteers who have signed up for this program and are out on a regular basis picking up uh, garbage throughout the community. So I, I just think that's really a, a cool thing and uh, and and fun. Another fun thing uh, that we're doing, I shared one of these with council, but each week we're doing pop-ups at the park with a fun uh, kind of pop-up activity. And they've just been a, a huge success. A lot of people are having fun with it. So hopefully you'll be able to um, to check out one of those throughout the summer. All the information's on the website. And that's all I have. Thanks, Council. Okay. Uh, Krista. I have two items this evening. I am pleased to announce that we will be recognizing all three legislators at the August 13th meeting. And the second item is that I have placed some cheat sheets for you at the dais um, that we received from Jurassic Parliament in case these are helpful. So you're welcome to leave these at the dais for when you're here for meetings or you're welcome to take them home with you. Um, but we thought that this might just be a helpful little document for you. Appreciate that. that. Although we thought it might be because the mayor's not here that we needed a reminder. <laughs> not <laughs> not at all. Okay. Not at all. I won't take it personally. Then. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. That's all I have for this okay. evening. Christina. Thank you, Krista, for keeping us in check. Um, I just, I'm still recovering from Covington days. Yeah. Uh, what a cool event. Uh, love. Although I, I think we did notice as we were walking that there was a little bit less of an attendance, at least during our parade. I'm hoping maybe that people were still asleep. It was a sat Saturday morning and then they showed up later. Um, we had a great time at the booth from four to seven and I'm grateful that we had uh, Chief Easterbrook there. I know there, it didn't even cross my mind that somebody would want to intervene with something so great, but hey, mm -hmm. you know, there are people and um, it was dealt with quickly and professionally, and I'm uh, grateful for, for that. Um, yeah, looking forward to August meeting. And yeah, December, it falls on Christmas Eve, our second okay. meeting, just FYI. Thank you. Beth. Because December 10th is a special <laughs> day for Joe and myself, <laughs> says Jerians. Um, so I had the... I had the opportunity last week to attend the, the Cities for Climate Change um, meeting. It's a King County-based meeting, and there's, oh, I don't know, probably 20 cities that are part of that consortium, and they're open to having other cities join, whether we decide to do that or not. But it was an interesting discussion on um, some of the initiatives on the ballot and how that may impact roads because of the climate um, the dollars that are getting put towards the move ahead Washington from some of the measures. So interesting to see where that ends up and how that might impact our projects. Um, yeah, Covington Day is great. The staff always does such a fabulous job and they bring that energy. I, I was I was exhausted yeah. and I looked over and I, you know our commissioners, our staff, yeah. they were just, yeah. they, they brought it and, and kept things going. So really appreciate all the work that they do and um, yeah. Uh, thanks to everybody. Okay. That's it. Thanks. Yeah. Debbie. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, just a, a note that there won't be an August meeting for the skateboard. Um, and then we meet jointly with all other transportation boards in September. Um, Covington days, I agree. Um, it was very well planned and executed. Mm -hmm. um, it was interesting this year. I, I felt like I had more people 
coming in and wanting to talk about all the different maps that we had. Mm -hmm. it, it really brought people in. So the more we can use those at events, I think the better we mm -hmm. can communicate what's happening. Um, it seemed like the energy was more around the Jenkins Creek Trail mm -hmm. and the town center slash aquatic center that really had people excited. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, with National Night Out coming up, that's just another opportunity to engage with our, our residents. And they really had a lot of good questions. Mm -hmm. um, what's nice is they were very supportive of all of the things that we're doing, uh, positive support around um, Proposition 1. And um, the, a lot of people ask questions about, well, how did we get to where we want to move the aquatic center? So kind of taking them through the problems um, with keeping it where it is, the problems with just trying to repair it. And everybody thought that made a lot of sense. So, um, and thank you all again for my cupcake. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Jennifer. Um, yes, Covington days, it was it was great. A little warm on Saturday, mm -hmm. um, but Sunday when I was at the booth, it was gorgeous and nice and cool and uh, Chief and I got to judge the watermelon eating contest, which was yeah. pretty, pretty fun. I'm surprised at like how many adults even <laughs> participated. There were more adults than children, mm. I think, right? I mean, as far as like comparing the little kid group to the big kid group. Um, and, and that was fun to see. It's great to see people, you know, get silly and, and get engaged with just, mm -hmm. a, I don't know, a wholesome event. Like it's telling Christina, parade is so wholesome. I don't know. I just, yeah. I just love all this you know, I know we're a city and we're growing and, but I, I love the, the things that, that anchor us to the community and give us more of that town feel. So it was a great weekend and everything was just executed perfectly, mm -hmm. planned out really well. We had everything we needed and, and uh, our residents all appeared to be having a great time. So well done to city staff. I know it's mm -hmm. a ton of work. Yeah. Joe. Uh, so first I want to say, I think Covington days was, was great. I enjoyed the parade this year. Uh, I, I do think, uh, Regan's son and, and, uh, Christina's son almost pegged me in the back of the head with yeah. Andy a few times. So it's all right. I, I, enjoyed I paid him for that, Joe. Uh, I hope so. You're the one that threw candy in front of the truck. Uh, yeah, I did. I did that once. Um, but, uh, I enjoy, as the guy who hates parades, uh, I did enjoy the parade. I think it was, I thought it was fun. And then Sunday, passing out ice cream. That was a good time. Lots of people came by. There was a, we were getting set up and the line started forming and it got very long. Debbie and I looked, he goes, this is gonna, this is gonna be a fun time. And it was, we, I enjoyed it. But uh, so that I, I can't wait for next year's. I do hope someday we can bring the dunk tank back because I do miss getting in there. Uh, so hopefully next year. Uh, secondly, uh, I had the regional transit committee meeting last week. I actually did it in this room because I had a member of the youth council, Abigail Castillo, came and testified to the RTC about needing better public transportation for students so that they can get from Kentwood or Kent Lake to Green River or anywhere in general, because as she put it, that it took three bus routes or two bus routes and uh, an hour and a half of time to get from Kentwood to Green River for her to do uh, running start. I will also give her credit. She had two minutes to talk. She did it in under two minutes and in one breath, which, yeah, I was sitting there watching. It was like, that's that's impressive because uh, I get any of us together and say, you have two minutes and it'll be 30 minutes later and we'll be done. But so she did a wonderful job and her comments were well taken. I did tell her that if she wants to uh, share those comments further and make sure that it's all understood, she can email it to me and I will email it to the uh, regional transit committee as a whole so that they can all have that. I haven't gotten any emails from her, so uh, there's that. At regional transit, we did approve the uh, rapid ride prioritization plan that is 
going to have nothing to do with Covington. We do not have any rapid ride routes. There's no plans for rapid ride routes. And I say there are no plans because uh, part of the rapid ride routes was talking about routes that would not come online until 2050. And in these plans for 20 uh, that go up to 2050, because they did include the majority of the planning that's happening, not a single one of these plans involves Covington. The closest is, and I'm sorry, I lost my page, is New Line uh, and 160, uh, current route is 165. It goes from Highline Community College to Kent to Green River Community College. And that is going to come online in 2050. Five zero? Yeah, yeah. five zero. Mm -hmm. We discussed, uh, there is a new route that will help in Kent to South Center to the Seattle Commercial Business District that will come online in 2030 or 2039. Um, but again, of all of the routes we discussed, not a single one is helping Covington, Maple Valley or Black Diamond. And I, or even Enumclaw for that matter, as the lone representative from this, from these four cities on that board, I take a, a lot of time to tout mm -hmm. that that is something we need and in September at the Regional Transit Committee caucus meeting for SCA uh, I cannot be the one to ask all the questions unfortunately because I could probably fill an hour and a half but sound or uh, King County Metro General Manager Michelle Allison will be at the SCA caucus meeting and she will be taking questions from caucus members. Uh, the staff member from each city there is going to have uh, a meeting in August. Uh, I, Don, Bob was out of town when this is happening, so you might have to relay some of this information to him, uh, but there will be a meeting for with staff and staff will be reaching out to the council member and I, who serves on that committee. And so I'm going to reach out to all of you. If you have questions, please send them to Bob so he can get them all put together. Do not send them to me. For love of all that is holy, keep, I do not want Mark coming and yelling at me. Mm -hmm. uh, please send them to Bob. And then I will talk with Bob and we will, and he will submit all of his questions to, uh, to our staff liaison from SCA, and then we will probably put together a bunch of questions. My question though is, would we like to see General Manager Allison come to another council meeting? We had her here last year, and I think it would be good to yeah. get a update about Metro and then maybe ask her a series of questions on what we could do to benefit Covington. Um, I don't know when we could do that, but I would like to see if we could get her out here again. Uh, other than that, uh, pick, we did not vote on the new changes to everything because it went through equity council or the equity cabinet. Uh, and then they approved everything before, like a week before the meeting. So everything had already been set in stone. So we will be talking about it in September. And other than that, that is all that I have. Great. Thank you, Joe. Um, I will just reiterate my, um, support and thanks for um, uh, appreciation for the well-run Covington days. Um, uh, really, uh, you know, I, I Beth mentioned it, I, but now that I think about it, yeah, the staff is kind of going 24 seven, you know, we're there for a couple hours and they're there the entire time. And you're right, I saw them just have a, what will be called when I was going up a, a PMA, a positive mental attitude the whole time. So it was really, and pass that along, we really do appreciate it. Um, just to some feedback I got in the booth, uh, some the maps were a big hit. In fact, someone asked if there is a Covington map that they can have in reference. I did see one in the recreation guide, um, but they were looking for something for a little more detail. So maybe in the future, just something to have at the booth that we can hand out or in the recreation guide, a map with, you know, some street names or something that people, we can give them and they can walk away with. So, um, yeah, all in all, I think the comments I got for the most part were very positive. Um, I 
trying to remember there was one person who's complaining about something, but I, I'll, I'll think of it when I leave. Um, but, but out of, you know, the 15 or 20 people that I talked to, it, most people were very excited to see what's happening and had thoughtful comments and questions about, okay, how are we going to deal with traffic or is there going to be a new school built at, at Lake Point, you know, those sorts of things. So people are, uh, at least the ones that stopped at the booth are engaged and are thinking about it. So that, that's great. Uh, I want to thank uh, Regan for the, the mister in the, um, in the booth, that was very helpful. Um, so appreciated that. Um, and you know, for the parade, um, maybe there's a happy medium between what we did last year with the walk and <laughs> this year. It seemed like we sprinted through the whole thing. And while some of you were throwing candy, Beth and I were picking it up. You know, we were <laughs> making sure the kids weren't getting run over. So if we're going to continue to throw candy, I think we need to do a little training on <laughs> how far that candy needs to go in the arch because there was plenty of it in the middle yeah, of the street. It, and it I could was have like, been mm. some of the children in the pickup. Right? Yeah, I'm sure yeah. it was. Yeah, I'm not naming names, but I'm just saying <laughs> there was a lot of candy in the are, middle Are of you street. suggesting we walk around City Hall and toss candy just no, to have for training? And, uh, if we continue to do it, we need to I think about I feel like about... we were faster than the yeah. truck this year. Also. Oh, my. It was, I, I was running by the end. Um, so, um, uh, I lost my... Oh, uh, for the parade also, um, you know, I, I don't know if it would be helpful or whatever, but if, have we ever thought about exploring an idea of a theme for those to, so that there could be something that through each of the floats or whatever that they tie into it? I mean, that's what the um, Seafair, I think, does and the Torchlight Parade in Spokane. I mean, obviously, these are much bigger parades, but it would be interesting to give people some guidance on here are some things we're thinking about so that they that the floats have, you know, something connects them. Um, so anyway, um, that's it for Covington Days. For the RFA, we had our meeting last week um, uh, on the agenda were uh, a couple of items, uh, one of which was uh, RFA is going to travel back to Atlanta to get, uh, receive its accreditation. They've been going to a, a, a year long process to have their processes and, and systems graded by an outside entity. And so they received that accreditation. It's good for their um, uh, insurance and other things, but also helps to have someone from the outside kind of question, why do you do it this way? And have them really think. So uh, they're really proud of that. Um, we also promoted a number of firefighters from firefighters to engineers that night. If you haven't seen this, they actually do a, a pinning ceremony where the firefighters come up, um, they are introduced, they're sworn into their new jobs, and then family members come up and, and put their pins, their new badges on them. So uh, we had three engineers and a captain get promoted. Um, yeah, we also got an update on kind of um, what the chief was talking about from the RFA standpoint for fire calls and calls for service. Um, I apologize, I forgot it, but they handed out some of the statistics on that and uh, for each of the different committees or excuse me, communities that they serve. Um, uh, here in Covington, I was surprised to learn we did have three fires uh, in Covington um, and there were a number of medical calls as you could imagine and fire calls. Um, so at the end of that presentation, I wondered, uh, I mentioned, is there any opportunity because each of our cities has different restrictions on um, fireworks. In fact, I don't, maybe Maple Valley, I don't know if any of them allow fireworks. So each of those calls is responding to something, activities that are banned or illegal. And so that's a cost that for an illegal activity that basically the RFA is eating. And so I just mentioned, is there any way to recover some of those costs? Their lawyer immediately stepped in and said, no. Um, um, but that got me thinking then, has there been any coordination between the partner cities on enforcement? I don't think there were any citations written in any of the cities. Um, and it just, we've been fortunate and lucky so far that we haven't had a major fire or a major catastrophe on 4th of July. Um, but I'd be interested and I haven't thought it out significantly, Regan, but bringing those cities together on, you know, maybe a, a special meeting and the RFA to talk about 
ways, additional ways maybe we can reduce some of those calls and maybe even um, if not cover costs, um, find ways to send a message that, you know, th this is risky what we're doing and, and we need to uh, make sure that we're minimizing the chance for those fires. I like what we did with our law enforcement here in Covington. I think that had a real mm -hmm. impact. Um, but if we can coordinate with other communities, that would be, I, I'd like to think about it. And then finally, um, if you haven't seen this, the RFA makes it a priority to recognize private citizens that took action to help save a life. And they had someone that they recognized at this last meeting. Um, she, I apologize again, can't remember her name, but she works at the Family Fun Center in Tequila. And um, they're, you know, the little go-karts and outside, I guess a young woman was driving and for whatever reason, her car stopped. Um, and, you know, there was a call on the um, PA that she was not breathing. Mm -hmm. And so this young woman immediately uh, responded, said, go get the AED. They got her off the car. They started, she started doing chest compressions. They got the AED hooked up, shocked her, got her pulse going again. Um, the RFA mentioned that it just so happened at that time, the, the responding fire station down there was actually responding to a call at uh, South Center. Mm -hmm. So it took, they had to call another station, which meant the normal response time is three minutes. It was seven. Um, and the young lady, you know, to her, uh, I'll cut the, the woman survived. So that's great. Um, but the young lady said that was the longest seven minutes of my okay. life. She said, I thought it was when it was done 40 minutes, but it was actually seven minutes. Uh, and they got, as I understood it, from when the, I guess when they recognized there was an issue to when they got her treatment and shot was like less than a hundred seconds, I think. And so she quickly responded and, you know, that, and they just reiterate again, people, that first chain in that chain of life, if someone stepping up is critical and your chances of surviving go up a gazillion times. So I, I was just really impressed with her. And kudos so. to Family Fun Center for ensuring their staff exactly. was trained. Yeah. And that's amazing. Yeah. So that's anyway, it was really, really good. Um, that's all I got. So um, we'll go on to the next public comment period. Um, <laughs> oh, public comment period. Um, Speakers will state their name, organization, and whether they are a Covington resident. Comments are directed to the city council, not the audience or staff. Comments are to be related to city business. Comments are not intended for conversation or debate and are limited to four minutes per speaker. For attendees participating by Zoom, click the raise hand button. For attendees participating by phone, dial star nine to raise your hand. Once the city grants permission to speak, Press unmute in Zoom or dial star six to unmute by phone. Notice campaign campaigning for any ballot measure or candidate at city hall or during council meetings, including this public comment is prohibited by state law RCW 42.17A.555. My eyes are going. Is there anyone in the audience that wishes to address the council? Anyone online that wishes to address the council? All right, I don't, is there a hand? No, I don't see any hands raised. So that public comment period is closed. We don't have another executive session, no? Okay, uh, therefore this meeting is adjourned at 9.09 p.m. <laughs>